Hello and welcome to the Python Arrow tutorial. Uh, Arrow is a Python library that offers a more uh, human-friendly way to deal with dates and times. Um, you might be wondering why you need that. There's a there's a whole bunch of modules already and a whole bunch of different ways of dealing with time and Python. Um, because uh, instead of dealing with a half dozen modules and a whole bunch of different data types, um, if you've done any kind of basic date time stuff with Python, you've probably already been frustrated with. It's a little haphazard, at least it feels a little haphazard. I understand the logic if you kind of go through it, yeah, but Arrow provides one centralized and uh, s simplified interface for those dates. Um, there's a reason why it's so popular. As we see, it'll be, it's, it's very nice. So uh, install, it is, uh, you do need to install it because it is uh, not the standard library, it's its own little project. So pip install arrow. Um, for the, all the following code, I'm just gonna have that import arrow that's gonna be at the beginning of our, of our code, that's just gonna be implied, just so I can save on some screen space. Um, so let's see, does anybody know what time it is? Anybody really care? If you, if, do you know? I don't know if I should put that reference in there. That might be a little bit too obscure for people. Uh, Arrow does. Uh, so, okay, so we're gonna start with the now. All right, so here's arrow.utc now. That's a function on Arrow you call that's going to tell you what. It's gonna return an object that represents what time it is right now when that function happens. And as you can see, if you print it out, you get this um, almost cryptic thing. So you can kind of see, oh, I've got a, I got a year here and a month and a day, and then uh, it starts getting a little more confusing as you go. You know, you can kind of think maybe arrow or maybe an hour and minutes and seconds. And but don't worry, the computer knows all about this. An arrow will actually, as we go through, will make it much more uh, readable. So uh, just getting right into that, there are many ways to format time. Uh, you get Unix time. So if you call that function, so we're just going to call a function and then oftentimes just call the functions that are on that object is going to return. So hopefully this doesn't confuse you too much. We're not going to assign this to a separate variable. We're just going to. So here's the timestamp. So this is the Unix timestamp. So it's the number of seconds since. Oh, it's somewhere on a later slide. I believe it's like 19, some, I think maybe January 1st, 1970. We're going to find out in just a moment. But yeah, so you get the timestamp. So you get like this uh, Unix timestamp. Uh, we can also access the year. You can see we just year and month and day. So there's a lot of ways to do it. So here we go. Um, if we want to uh, have a little bit more formatted, we just can call format as a function and it will give you, you know, a little bit more readable. But if you, this is where it gets really cool and uh, where the possibilities really open up, there's a whole ways of writing out code to make the format. So here, this is the standard way we kind of write dates here in America. Um, I think this is standard everywhere, right? Yeah, I, one of the things you do, if you ever do any uh, messing around with human readable dates and times in computers, you'll learn that like there's all kinds of ways of representing the dates. Specifically, I believe um, the British, I think they do the they go day, month, and year. Yeah, yeah. So they wouldn't. They probably wouldn't do do it like this. Um, so anyhow, um, I've got, or maybe yes, whatever. You get the idea. So you've got day, month, and year, and then it's gonna give you that. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of different codes you can do all kinds of cool stuff. So here we got one that's uh, not just for the date. This one is actually for time. So this is kind of this one is more standardized. So we've got the code HH means hour with a, a leading zero. And mm is uh, the minute uh, with leading zero, and same thing with the s. And then the a represents am and pm. That goes there. And then the zz is going to be a time zone um, factor. So as we could see, this is actually giving us in a UTC time, so zero hours of difference. So five, eighteen, and thirty-seven seconds. So okay, here's the localized time zone. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. There we go. We can specify. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. 
Um, it was too subtle for me. Hopefully it was too subtle for you so you can learn. So previously we've been doing UTC now. That's why we're getting that zero time. Uh, the, this, 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 this plus zero, 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 zero. It's UTC, as you can see in the next slide, I'm in the Pacific time zone. So I'm at negative seven. So I'm seven hours negative from uh, UTC time. Things are kind of going off the rails. Time gets weird. We really start thinking about it. All right. So we can do, uh, if we don't do UTC now, we just do now, and then it's going to give us a date uh, object that is based on our time zone locally for that computer. So for me, when I did this, it was uh, 10, 26, and two seconds in the morning and the negative seven UTC time. In case you don't know, the time zones are represented like this. I, I got a little confused earlier. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too. Uh, so, but we can also specify in the now function the time zone. So here we go. We want to specify the uh, East Coast time, East Coast and the USA. Uh, so, boom, here we go. And they're negative four, which makes sense, right? So the Pacific time zone here in Seattle, it is negative seven. And then in New York City, it's negative four because they are, um, there's a three hour difference between us. You also do a little bit of time travel. So we're gonna stick with that uh, now function because that gives us our local, our time zone information, which is useful. So we're gonna create a, a variable named now with arrow dot now, the function. And now we're gonna do this, this is really cool. So that um, object that's returned, the now, has a function called shift. And you can actually kind of do a little bit of math here. So we're gonna say hours equal negative one. So that's gonna actually be in the past. It's gonna be in the past one hour. So we saw earlier, it was 1026, my local time right now. And then if we go back in time, it's going to be uh, nine. You can also humanize the time zone or the time zones. <laughs> you can also humanize the time. So here we go. We've got our now. So that's going to be the time right now. We can call that function. And then we're going to subtract one hour from that. And we're going to humanize it. And so that's gonna say an hour ago, right? So if you want to have, you may have seen this on different uh, other applications that will tell you, you know, in human terms, like when something was posted, it won't just give you like the exact time. It'll say, oh, it was posted a couple of hours ago or two hours ago or three hours ago, one day ago or two weeks ago. That's what I'm talking about with the more humanized. This is really cool. Um, other times, you can, um, let's see, da, 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 da. oh yeah, so you can, this is gonna be more um, more time, uh, more time stuff, of course, sorry. <laughs> so if we do arrow.get, we can actually specify a Unix timestamp. Remember earlier I was trying to remember when the Unix time, when, when the zero was? Well, we can actually find out exactly right here. So we're gonna give get takes a Unix timestamp, so we're gonna say what, when was zero? That's we're going to just assign it to occasion and then occasion. We're going to actually use that format thing from before. So it's going to be month. So M oops, M, 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 M. It's actually going to give us the full, full word of your month. And then D is just going to be just uh, the number, no leading zero. And then Y, Y, Y will give you the year. So zero at zero time actually represented January 1st, 1970. Um, and if you're interested in UX time, I, uh, or if this intrigues you and you wonder what, what's going on, I won't explain it all here. Um, the Wikipedia article for it's got a cool, I'll, I'll put a link in the, for the Wikipedia in uh, the show notes, but it's really cool. It's, I, I don't know why I like it so much. Okay. <laughs> and here we can also show you, we can do that arbitrarily. So I want, I don't even know how to say this, but I'm just going to say it's the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. What time, what, what date, when was that? Well, so apparently I missed it. And you missed it probably too. Maybe maybe you were on it, maybe you celebrated. This was a, this would have been a big moment. Um, apparently happened in uh, February 13th, uh, 2009. We missed that. It uh, would have been an auspicious day, you know? Uh, let's see. Unix timestamps can also be taken as a string. So it's kind of smart about that. So if we, this, or previously we were giving it actually just a integer. Uh, we can give it a string and then it's smart enough to know, hey, this is a number. There's a, there's a number in this string and it is a string. So we will convert that. It's just kind of the, giving you like some examples of the, uh, the nicer parts of 
Arrow, that's just a good example of like it tries to do things that are reasonable and doesn't like hit you over the head when you do something wrong. <laughs> um, and parse from string, this is cool. So uh, we can see that this is a string and then we know, if we know what the format is, so you'll run into this a lot of times when you're maybe uh, reading like a CSV file and it's got a whole bunch of dates and date formats. The dates are in, in uh, all the same format, but it's, it's a strange format sometimes or it doesn't make any sense. And if you know what the format, what, what rules they're using, you can always write that down as the, to parse it. And this format here is using the same format and the same codes that you would use to format a string. That makes sense? Hopefully that makes sense, right? So at the B day, at the B day, oh look, August 13, 970. I wonder whose birthday that is. <laughs> Same codes from the formatter. So you can also do uh, string searching. This is, this is another really cool thing. So we, uh, we encountered that M, 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 which we, I said was the full name of the month. And then we've been dealing with the Y, 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 that's the year. You can actually say, so America was born in July 1776. And then we can actually use that same get to try to find it, right? So we wanted to go uh, the B-Day string and give it, and then we say, hey, this is the date format, and it's going to look for it and find it and look. Boom, I find it. And uh, this is, yeah, January or July 1776 was negative 610632000. Yeah. That's useful. Uh, ranges. So we can also do ranges. Uh, so we can iterate over time. So remember before we could um, shift time around a little bit or subtract time. So here we go. We're going to uh, once again call now and we're going to assign that to a variable called now. And then we're going to um, get five hours. So that's actually the, the previously we're doing negatives. And so this is actually in the future. So we're actually going to add five hours onto that. And then for each in, and then this is a long one, arrow dot arrow range. So we're, it's going to be just like if you were to do a range of integers. And we're going to say that we want to do it, want to, the intervals between these two times, we want them to be hours. And then we're going to give it the beginning and the end. And then it's going to iterate over once per hour. And that's going to print it out for us. Um, that may sound complicated, but when you actually look down here, what it prints it out, it makes sense. So we told it a beginning time and an end time and the space between to iterate over as being one hour. So it starts off at Friday at 11 a.m. It goes to Friday, 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. So it's iterating over this range of time in an interval of an hour. And you can change this interval to be a whole bunch of different options. Uh, yeah, so that's very useful. Sometimes you want to uh, iterate over things in uh, a certain amount of time. Um, but wait, there's more. There is lots more. The, uh, this is just kind of like a basic introduction to the Arrow library. There's a whole bunch more functions. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend exploring it more and playing around with it. So hopefully this, uh, this video got you a little bit introduced to it so you won't be too scared when you go into it. Um, play around with it, yeah. Hopefully you found, find this use, video useful. Thank you for watching. I hope that video was useful. If you liked it, hit that like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, please hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments below. Thank you.